Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm going to be talking about Bible stuff today. I decided to do it outside today. It's like super foggy out here. I feel like I'm in like Europe from like, you know, the movies and such where it's all foggy and like damp. So <laughs> I'm going to be out here. So, you know, in the last video, we were talking about identity. Um, so I kind of gave a uh, real, real quick, just kind of rundown of, you know, identity and, you know, the definitions that we're using and all that. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, go, go back and watch that first one. It kind of lays the groundwork for what we're going to be talking about. So today, uh, I'm kind of want to, to really stretch this out, this whole little series on identity I'm doing really just so that we can hit all the uh the really important points to kind of ease into where i'm really trying to get to um so today we're actually going to be talking about something uh that i find really interesting it's more of a uh, i guess philosophical uh, <laughs> approach to identity um but it's still really relevant to you know where we started last week so i want to want to start by uh, really just kind of posing the question once again of how do we determine our identity? You know, uh, last week we briefly talked about the idea between um, core identity and identity attributes, being that the core identity is who you really are, like at your core, right? We've heard that, like, who are you at your core? So core identity is, is really just who are you at your core, stripped away of everything else, who are you? right and we'll obviously get more more deep into that but you know the bible specifies that we are a three-part being right that we are a spirit god you know breathed into adam and he became a living spirit right we see that in, in there in genesis and many other places in the word that we can see that that god made us in his image god is a spirit right those who worship him must worship him in spirit of truth because god is a spirit uh so god created man as a spirit you know we have a soul our mind our will and our emotions and that makes up a lot of our kind of individual personality right our identity attributes a lot of that is in our our soul you know your kind of personality kind of the quirks and the way that you are a lot of that is our soul our mind will and our emotion and obviously we, we all know that we live in a body you know a lot of the way that we interact with one another is based on you know the physical form housing our spirits, right? So we all live in a physical body. Um, so unfortunately, kind of in the world, uh, we tend to base our identity off of two of our three um, points of being, I guess. Uh, we tend to base our identity based off of our physical body right uh you know how much you know uh, melanin or whatever you have in your skin uh determines your identity um where you know your your body first you know came into the world what country or region on this planet that has to do with that's how you identify yourself or you know whether your your body is male or female well that's how you identify yourself or you know if not our body, then we find a lot of our, our, our identity in our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. You know, whether, you know, there's something, you know, a bit off about <laughs> your soul. You know, it's like, well, I identify with this issue. Or, you know, in whatever other ways that our soul could be distinct and different from other people, we use that to identify ourselves. Um, but as... As a whole, we seem to neglect identifying as our core identity, which is our spirit, because we stripped away of everything else. We are a spirit created in the image of God. And we'll get more into that later. That's, uh, that's toward the end of what we're going to be talking about. But um, with that in mind, I want to bring up the philosophical question of how much of you can be stripped away and you still remain you. Um, there's been talks about this in recent times with, uh, you know, some scientists working on and 
uh, last I heard making some some pretty uh, I don't know if impressive is the word some interesting I guess uh, uh, kind of headway and progress in like brain and head transplants um, and so with stuff like that it raises the philosophical question once again uh, who are we at our core how much of you can be stripped away and you still be you and not you be somebody else you know um, so there's this really interesting uh, kind of philosophical argument um, that uh, it has to do with this this ship this boat the sea vessel <laughs> uh, so in ancient Greece there was a, a legendary king named Theseus right and he founded the city of Athens um, and he fought many naval battles um, and because of that because of his fame and all of that the the people of Athens dedicated a memorial in his honor by preserving his ship right and uh, you know you can look online you know the uh, the ship of Theseus look online you can see it excuse me <laughs> you can see it there are are still pictures I think it's still standing so there are pictures online you can go check it out for yourself um, but uh the idea here is this is a really old boat and a lot of it is made of wood and over time we know what happens and it's just out out in the elements right so we know what happens two things made of wood over long periods of time out in the weather it starts to rot decay fall apart and all that so you know they have to to keep this ship in good condition uh so throughout all of these many 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 years they've replaced at this point all of it <laughs> so the entire ship has been replaced at this point so the question is is it still the ship of theseus because you know originally all the parts were there and then little by little they started taking parts off and adding new parts to you know replace the bad parts right so at what point did it cease being the ship of theseus or is it still the ship of theseus so it's this philosophical question right of how much of something can be taken away and it still be that same thing like once they got to the 50 you know the the, the once they, they crossed the 50 50 point to where now they've replaced 51 percent of the original ship is it still the original ship or once they get rid of all of it is if there's not a single plank left from the original ship can it still be called the ship of theseus or because it is in the shape and the spirit or whatever of the ship of theseus does that allow it to still be considered the ship of theseus right so these are just questions and so but i think it is uh relevant to how we identify ourselves you know how much of what makes you you can be stripped away and you still be you especially when we create so much of how we identify ourselves or how we identify others based on our bodies or something like that something that changes you know one of my favorite uh, and we'll get into it later but one of my favorite um parables that jesus tells is the the, the parable of the the two houses right you have two houses i always assume that they're on the beach because a storm comes so i assume it's like an ocean storm i don't know but so you have these two houses one is built on sand one is built on the rock right which is uh allegory for the word of god a storm comes the same exact storm comes to both these houses and this the one that's built on sand completely wiped out the one that's built on the rock not even phased right so i think it's interesting that in our lives we base so much of our identity off of things that change you know like i am not the same person really in any regard for the most part that I was when I was a child, right? I mean, I th I've heard that every seven years, all the cells in your body have been replaced, right? Because your cells die and then they're replaced with new cells and all that. So I've heard, I mean, science gurus, you guys can fact check me on this, but from what I've heard, like every seven years, all the cells in your body have been replaced, right? Um, so if that's the case, every seven years, you're physically not the same person right back to the ship of theseus if everything within you has been replaced every seven years can you still be called the same person and then mentally emotionally like my interests 
the how I think, how my mind works, all of that is not the same as when I was a child. So if my body is not the same and my mind, my soul is not the same, then I think it's, a, uh, <laughs> I just think it's funny that we tend to base so much of our identity or how we view others off of this. When at our core, our core identity is that we are a spirit, you know? Um, I like C.S. Lewis, he talks about how uh, uh, giving commentary on like how we treat people really is, he says, you've never met a mortal man, you know, because none of us are, are mortal beings. Uh, we are eternal beings created in the image of God, you know, living spirits. Uh, you know, so there's, there's my little theology, philosophical lessons slash questions for today. It's uh, past the 10 minute mark. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what, uh, what you think about all this and, uh, tune in next week for more things of this nature. Have a great day.